Hello, everyone, and welcome to this meeting of the Planning and Development Council of the Town of Oakville's Council. Uh, Madam Clerk, we have no regrets. Everybody's here. And, uh, Council, are there any declarations of pecuniary interest? Madam Clerk, I see none. Oh, oh wait, Councillor Duddick may have a declaration. If you unmute yourself, we will hear it. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, the uh, pecuniary interest for um, item number six, as I'm a member of St. Paul's Congregation, uh, St. Paul's United Church. All righty. We will keep that in mind when we get to that item. Thank you for the declaration. Anyone else? One more time. That's it, Madam Clerk. Uh, Council, for our short agenda tonight, uh, if you would like to resolve into Committee of the Whole, I need a mover and seconder. Councilor Liz Chinna and Councilor Chisholm, uh, please raise your hands if you're against moving into Committee of the Whole. Madam Clerk, there is no objection, and uh, we are now resolved into Committee of the Whole for these planning matters. The uh, Council, uh, the first uh, three items on the agenda are consent items. Is there um, an interest in discussing any of those, or is there a motion to move the consent items? Councillor O'Meara, I saw your hand first. Unmute yourself. Councillor O'Meara is you, moving. You move? Thank you. Councillor O'Meara is moving the consent items. Uh, if you have an objection to any of the consent items being moved, please raise your hand. Madam Clerk, there are no objections, and the consent items are carried. That brings us to the uh, public hearing item, items, I should say. And if you are watching the live stream of this meeting on oakville.ca, you and if you wish to speak to an item on our agenda, you can call 905-815-6095. That's 815-6095 in area code 905. Our clerks are standing by to take your call. When you call in, you will be placed in a virtual waiting room. And when I poll for delegations, uh, you will press nine, star nine on your phone's keypad, which allows you to raise your hand in Zoom talk and advise the clerk that you wish to speak at the appropriate time. This information is also posted on your screen below the live stream on oakville.ca. And we will wait for you and make sure that you get heard uh, if there's any delay as a result of this little procedure that we have to go through. Council, the first item before us is the public meeting report for the official plan amendment, zoning bylaw amendment, and draft plan of subdivision by Diagram Developments Oakville. And uh, we have a report from the Planning Services Department to be presented by Robert Thun, the senior planner who prepared the report. Mr. Thun, uh, council and the public and I are looking forward to your report. Uh, thank you, Mayor Burton and members of council and everybody uh, streaming today. The application before council is an official plan amendment. That's what I'm doing. There we go. There we go. Sorry about that, Your Worship and members of council. We have an official plan amendment and a zoning bylaw amendment together with a draft plan of subdivision application submitted by Diagram Developments Oakville Inc. Uh, the proposal relates to the development of eight hectares of land. Uh, the report tonight can be found on page 27 of tonight's agenda. And for everyone's information, the purpose of tonight's meeting and the statutory public meeting is to introduce the application to the members of council and to the public and to obtain any further information, comments for review as related to the application that will become part of the future recommendation report. This slide before council reflects the air photo, identifies the site and its contacts with the surrounding area. The subject lands are located on the west side of Six Line, north of Marvin Ave, the new area just to the east of Six Line. The subject lands are surrounded principally by agricultural lands. They are vacant at the present time. Uh, the site is also traversed by the West Morrison Creek, and you can see on the slide in this location, in here and up Six Line, the uh, roadside uh, ditch is part of the West Morrison Creek. 
To the east of the lands, as I had mentioned, are residential lands that are presently being developed and they are under construction. The slide before council is the proposal. It includes 141 townhouse units west of the NHS block, which reflects Morrison Creek, so that's in this area here. A natural heritage system block, as I just mentioned, is block 25. That will be for the West Morrison Creek. A stormwater management pond, which will be duly shared with the property to the north and this property. That's block 24. And a neighborhood center block, uh, block 27, on the immediate west side of 6th line for 360 apartment units. Uh, that is block 27, and that is the subject of the official plan amendment associated with this uh, application. Access to the site, as you can see, uh, or partially see, um, access from the east, six line, would come through the Argo lands to the east, or to the south, I should say, and also from a future preserve drive, which is on the Mattamy lands to the west. Um, Block 25, just as further information, as I said, is uh, part of the West Morrison Creek. Uh, review of this block and Block 24 are part of the ongoing required EIR FSS uh, process. That's an extensive documentation into the creek and stormwater management for that subwatershed. During the ongoing uh, pandemic, an alternative approach was undertaken for the applicant required public information meeting. They use a mail-out approach. Uh, it was sent out to various landowners around the site, councillors, agencies, and whatnot. And there was a request for comments by May 25th of this year. Uh, based on that approach and dialogue with the applicant, no concerns were raised through that process. From the secondary plan perspective, this slide shows both the east secondary plan and the master plan. From the secondary plan perspective, which is the left-hand side of the screen, the property is designated na neighborhood area and natural heritage system area. So it's only the two designations. Uh, as we further go into uh, the secondary plan, there is a master plan, which is a conceptual plan on how North Oakville could develop. And in that, the subject property is identified as natural heritage system area general urban area, suburban, neighborhood center area, and stormwater management facility. And those are all shown on Appendix 7.3 of the North Oakville uh, Secondary Plan. As I mentioned, it is a, the master plan is a concept design for the development of the North Oakville planning area. It's not the only design, but it is one that was created during the secondary plan process. From the official plan perspective, your worship and members of council, the applicant has uh, submitted an application. He's proposing to uh, deal with block 27 only through this official plan amendment. And he's requesting, or they are requesting an increase in the maximum density for this block from 150 units per net hectare, which would equate to 211 residential units, to a density of 260 units per hectare and they are proposing 360 units on that site. The development of that block 27 as shown on figure 1B of the staff report uh, shows a concept related to three six-story apartment buildings. From a zoning perspective, your worship, the site present is zoned existing development. Existing development only allows legally existing uses on the date the pair of bylaw was passed. What the applicant is proposing is to rezone the site from ED, existing development, to Neighborhood Center 2, related to the 360 apartment units. Neighborhood Center General, related to the townhouses fronting on Preserve Drive, so that would be along this, this edge right here. General Urban, related to the townhouses internal to the site, there. Suburban is related to reserve blocks, uh, for singles associated with the Argo lands to the south. So these are only partial blocks. They will be rezoned, but once development occurs with Argo to the south to create the blocks and rezone, the two will merge and then viable development lots are created. The NHS uh, relates to the West Morrison Creek channel. 
and stormwater management, the SMF, is the pond that I alluded to. From a parking, a street parking perspective, uh, I've put this slide on because I know that it has always been a discussion point. So from this perspective at this present time, the applicant is proposing 31 on-street parking spaces, as you can see by uh, the boxes on streets A, C, B, D. Um, but from a North Oldfield perspective and for council's information for the site as a whole, Apartments that are f more than four stories high, the parking is up to, uh, that's a max, it's, there is no, no uh, bottom limit, up to 1.2 parking spaces per dwelling unit, plus 0.2 parking spaces per dwelling unit for visitors. And from a townhouse perspective, so basically streets A, B, C, and D, uh, it is one space per unit minimum. So from a parking perspective, what the applicant is proposing presently, for the 141 townhouse units, they are proposing two spaces per unit. One is in the garage and one is in the driveway. For block 27, they are proposing one parking space per unit, so that is 360 parking spaces, plus 72 parking spaces for visitors at 0.2 spaces per unit. They have not requested through their zoning amendment any deviation from the North Oakville zoning parking regulations. The slide before council now are matters that are to be addressed as part of the future recommendation report and um, any of the issues that are raised or comments raised through tonight's process will also be included on this one and it is an ongoing technical review so there, there may be other comments that arise through the processing of the application. But in particular, Your Worship, uh, because it is an official plan amendment, uh, I draw your attention to Block 27. And we have raised a concern in the bullet points related to the development of the block because of the 150 to 260 uh, request for the density and also the deviation in the road pattern uh, from the master plan. So as I said, this concern is captured uh, in the bullets. It's the second and third bullets on page 40 of the agenda and page 14 of the staff report. Uh, a full analysis of this block is necessary and must be considered uh, and must consider matters of the principles for the secondary plan, transportation, and the reconstruction of six line, that ongoing project. So in conclusion, your worship, staff are putting forward the recommendation as shown for council's consideration. Uh, once again, additional comments received tonight will form part of the record. Uh, staff will be returning to council in the future with a recommendation report uh, at a future planning and development council meeting. Thank you, your worship. Thank you, Mr. Thun, for a very good report. Uh, Council, do you have issues to add to the list and or questions for Mr. Thun? I'm gonna have to make a list here. Just hold your hands up for me, please. I appreciate your help here. Maybe I should make a list of who doesn't have a question. <laughs> Okay, I think I've got you all. Uh, Councillor Palmer, please unmute yourself and ask your questions or, or add your issues. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, first of all, Mr. Dunn, I, I really admire the way that uh, your report made the issues very clear, so I wanted to thank you for that. Um, I do have a few questions for staff. Uh, I know that um, you just covered the parking, which wasn't initially in the report. Um, and I didn't hear anything about the visitor parking for the townhouses. And um, that's something that I'll be looking out for because I find that in the current built subdivisions, the main issue with parking does not come from any of the medium density, the low rise buildings. It's from the townhouses um, where we have neighborhoods of up to 80 townhouses and only, you know, eight to 10 visitor parking spots. So that's where the real concern is. So um, I'd like to know if that, or if we could add that to the list as well to ensure that we have um, adequate parking there. And I know that staff was working on a report um, to whether we were going to be changing the standards for townhouse parking and what the ratios would be there. 
That's my first comment slash question. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm not sure an answer is required. It, it's really a, an issue to be added. So I think that's her. Yeah. Uh, next on the list, I have Councillor Elgar. Oh, I'm not, I'm not done yet. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, please carry on. Thanks. Um, okay, so also in regards to uh, one of the points on your um, issues and concerns, we have uh, the NHS limits being appropriately defined. Um, and I'm just, I'm just trying to understand what the drive, what's driving your concern on that question. Through you, Your Worship, to Councillor Parma, the EIR FSS has not been completed yet. It's that documentation which will establish the boundary limits to that. So that will be reflected as a line on the draft plan of subdivision. So we want to make sure that the block limits for Block 25 are accurately depicted through that process. So that's the reason why it was, uh, was raised. Okay. Um, and in regards to the density, uh, the increase in density, can you tell us when is the last time we did that? We did something like that? Uh, sorry, clarification on the last time I did what? Well, the last time we, the town considered a uh, development project where we increased the density. In, I think in North, in the North Oak Valley Secondary. There have, there, through you, uh, Mayor Burton, uh, there have been several instances. I believe the, the closest one was uh, Viva, just to the south on Sixth Line. I stand corrected, but I believe there was one related to density and height. Um, five stories to six stories in the corresponding units. I believe that was an official plan amendment. Okay. okay. Um, and then, Mr. Dunn, would you just please, for, for the benefit of the public and those who are listening and at home, could you describe the intent of the NLESP so we can better understand your concern about the density change? Through you, Your Worship, uh, to the councillors and the members of public, the North Oval East Secondary Plan was a very extensive process I was part of since basically 1999, as some of the councillors can attest to. It took a long time to deal with uh, creating a vision for how North Oakville develops. North Oakville was developed on several principles, one being protection of the natural heritage system, one being transit first. There were also principles related to uh, achieving a minimum density or a minimum population of 55,000 people and 35,000 jobs. So the master plan that you see before you in the secondary plan is what would minimally be required to achieve those, uh, those populations, be it employment, be it residential. So we've got, a, we've got a various number of disciplines that were included in that related from environmental. They did the subwatershed study. That leads us to the EI or FSS. That leads us to the delineation of how Block 25 gets created. It also allows us to deal with Block 24 from a stormwater management perspective. It also provides us with a road pattern that basically dealt with grid pattern. Okay, so sometimes you see a modified grid, sometimes you see the grid exactly the same way as the master plan was created. So you put all those together from the natural heritage system to stormwater management, to the environmental, to the land uses, to uh, maintaining things that are important to us, be it a cultural heritage type of matter. All those came into play to create the secondary plan, which is the long-term vision for how North Oakville is to develop, okay? It is a minimum. In those days when we dealt with it, density wasn't an issue that wanted to be dealt with. Ground-related issue or ground-related development was the way to go. Times have changed and now we're seeing applications while they still have to maintain the intent of the secondary plan. Densities are getting higher, built forms are changing. You have to keep in mind, we dealt with this in 2008. It's 12 years ago. Times have changed and uh, ideas on how development should occur have changed also. So hopefully that's just a quick couple second uh, review of North Oakville, but uh, it was a long time coming and we're just implementing it now. Thank you. Thank you for that clarification. It was an excellent summary. Those are all my questions for now. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Palmer. Councillor Elgar, please unmute yourself and away you go. Okay, thank you. To you, uh, Mayor Burton, 
Uh, regarding allocation, so is this a, a this development application? Is is it um, dealing with an um, allocation that was from a previous allocation, or is this the the allocation that hasn't been approved yet by all of the developers in Halton Region? Through you, Your Worship, to Councilor Elgar, this is part of the new program that is before Regional Council. Okay. These days. So that isn't in place yet no. due to the fact that not all the developers have, have ponied up the money, correct? That is correct. Okay. Page 41 of the report, the last sentence in the uh, financial B, the comment is, this is anticipated to impact the town's ability to ensure that growth pays for growth, quotation marks. Mm -hmm. The latest I have on growth pays for growth is that Oakville residents are subsidizing 16210000 a year on growth. Has that changed or what has happened since uh, since the report I've received from their town? And that doesn't include the region, of course, which kicks in where we're subsidizing another $14 million and $7,600, Through you, Mayor Burton, to Councillor Elgar, that's probably a, a question that I'd like to defer to the Finance Department to because you're dealing with numbers that I right. have. Right, but my those are important on. numbers. Yes. It, 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 but when I read the report, I'm just concerned that people may get the idea that growth pays for growth based on that statement. So I'm hoping that financial can clarify mm -hmm. whether there whether there's something wrong with the report we received from the town to the region, or something's something's not right here. Thank you very much. I'll take that under direction, Councillor. I appreciate that. Thank you so much, Rob. Thank you, Councillor Elgar. Councillor Lischina. Thank you, Your Worship. I think I just uh, want a point of clarification. Uh, Mr. Thun, you, you, you're talking about the increase in units from uh, another 149 units. So the stormwater management pond that's uh, designated the area of 0.6 hectares, is that already to include the additional dwellings? Or is that big enough is my question? Through you, Councillor, or, or through you to Councillor Lischina, your Worship, uh, are you speaking about Block 24? The stormwater management pond? Uh, yeah, yes. That stormwater so management pond will deal with all development upstream, so to the north of this site. Block 27 oh, and the lands to the south will go to a, uh, a pond further down uh, six line. Got it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Chenna. Councillor Hazlitt Thiel. Um, thank you. Uh, through you, Mayor Burton, um, I just asked a question about: Is there any been any discussion around a, um, a component of the the uh, the housing being affordable in terms of what the region that regional allocation is? Uh, through your your worship, to Councillor Hazlitt Thiel. To date, I have not received the comments yet on the application from Halton Region. I would assume that would be part of the discussion in their letter to me uh, once they do provide comments. Okay, thank you for that. Um, an another question that I have is, and it, it may be just a clarification, on page 41 under the financial, it says, the NHS area may result in trail work that would be done on behalf of the town and reimbursed in a future year. Um, Previously, I thought I had heard that absolutely no walking within the natural heritage system. So when you say trail work, are you just meaning um, preservation and protection of the natural heritage systems, things that need, um, you know, pulling out the buckthorn and all of what, whatever happens? Or are you talking about actually building a trail within the natural heritage system? Through you, Mayor Burton, to the councillor, uh, Block 25 will have trails within it. It's part of our active transportation program where we're connecting not only the road system, but we're also creating a pathway system along our creek system. Think of it this way. It's no different than South Dundas where you've got a top of bank buffer and a, side, or a sidewalk, a trail going through that top of bank buffer, connecting the pedestrians from one place to another. So there, okay. There, I just wanted I just wanted to understand that that is in fact what you meant. I think it's very important. I've often wondered why we did, you know, 
don't have it in other parts, but I just wanted to clarify my understanding. Um, and my last is, is there a discussion? Um, this 150 to 260 has already been tabled, but I'm also concerned about the, the, the movement out of two bedrooms um, and uh, the, uh, the, reduct the, the fact that families are often uh, gonna be living in, the, in the, these uh, apartments or condos and um, one bedroom, this, it seems like a pretty significant reduction. Did they give a rationale for it? That is one of the things I'm going to ask them as part of the planning questions to them as to what's the actual makeup of all the units and what's the reduction from twos to one. Because okay. the, the comment I've been getting consistently throughout is, is for affordability. A one bedroom is more affordable than a two bedroom. I, I okay, will well, look into that further for you though, Councillor. Yeah, I mean, it, it really is about balance, right? And of course, one bedroom is more affordable, but that doesn't necessarily mean, um, anyhow, I'm sure you understand that. Um, well, I would like to see you in the report that comes back, um, and as you said, the region might talk to it, um, the, the, this, how this supports um, uh, the region's... Okay, thank you. I will take that under direction. Councillor Hazathiel, thank you. Our next is Councillor Duddock. Um, the next is Councillor Adams. Thank you very much. I uh, have, uh, I think, one question to ask or add to the list. You've already captured the issue of the whether it's appropriate to lose the street access through Block 27, but I'd like to add uh, a question, which is, is the lack of pedestrian and cycling access through Block 27 appropriate? So if the application goes forward as it's shown on page 31, it doesn't appear to me from that particular figure that there's any access through the site um, to access to the east. And I'd like to know whether that's an appropriate thing or if they're gonna continue with it, would they change that to include access at least for pedestrians and cycling? through the site even if there's no vehicular traffic. Through your worship to Councillor Adams, the bullet points that are reflected in the staff report do relate to the development of Block 27. It's not to say that Block 27 as proposed is acceptable. The master plan does show the road pattern coming through it. So there's a deviation from what was originally thought of and the rationale as to why the cul-de-sac coming off of the Argo lands, no pedestrian connection, no cycling connections, no road connections, those things are have to be reviewed with them. Very good, so that I, I look forward to that review and that question being satisfactorily answered. I just wanted to ensure that the specific issue of pedestrian cycling access was covered as part of that conversation. Thank you very much, Councillor. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Sanju. Thank you, Worship. Uh, thank you uh, to staff for the excellent report. This is very, very, very helpful. Um, I also just wanted to tag on to Councillor Hazlitt Beale's comments about affordable housing. Um, this is a, a, an issue I think both Councillor Carmar and I have been hearing about relatively frequently as of late. Uh, we have a lot of young families moving into the area. And quite frankly, a lot of folks are even looking for housing during COVID. Um, Recently, just given uh, what the site looks like right now, my guess, and I could be completely wrong on this, but from what I'm looking at, there's a stormwater management pond that's close to George Savage, just south of George Savage right now. Uh, and there's a number of units that are right up against that Maradami uh, complex just on Dundas. Uh, those back out, and I would think that these ravine lots in Block 23, Block 22, would also face out into the NHS as well, just like the stormwater management pond would on George Savage. Uh, and those are going for over a million. And they're about, you know, 18, 15 to 1800 square feet. So I want to be um, transparent with the developer about that. We need to ensure that this is a place that young families can feel welcome and continue to feel welcome and are available and uh, affordable housing is available to them. Um, that aside, um, do we have any indication of what the size of the garage in these units is going to be? I know that their, their thought to us or their comments to us 
thus far have been that there's going to be two parking spaces in those townhouses with one in the garage and one in the driveway. Uh, Councilor Farmer and I can attest to the fact that some of these garages aren't big enough to even fit a car. Through you, Your Worship, to Councilor Sandu, uh, there's no request to reduce the zoning standard for the parking space size. Okay, so you're going to get basically your 10 foot by 20 foot type of parking garage. The issue that we've always encountered through those types of discussions is where do you put the step from the door leading into the garage? Mm -hmm. So it becomes a viable walk around type of garage. So I, I hear where you're coming from and I will continue on with that because that's one of my pet peeves also with regards to parking. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Thon. Thank you. Uh, and then also, uh, with regard to Block 27, I heard the other councillors' comments and also the staff comments about the court. Um, uh, something that I just wanted to mention generally, and then this might just be a takeaway. Uh, do we have any kind of indication about what the frontage would be on those lots if that court stays in place? Uh, just want to see, I'm, I'm trying to understand what the vision for that area is supposed to look like and what those houses are going to look like if we do get those cycling paths and things like that, just so that we know what the mix is going to be in that subdivision. Okay. Yeah. Through you, your worship, uh, I'll, I'll take that as a takeaway to, from Councillor Sandu. Perfect. Thank you. Um, and I think, oh no, sorry, I have one more question. Um, you had mentioned the transit first requirements in the area. Um, COVID aside, uh, I think I speak for the rest of the ward when I say that we'd like to see additional transit in the area. So for us to be continuing to develop along that guideline, I want to ensure that we have the same type of push from a transit perspective. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if that's discussion for the developer or if that's a staff takeaway. It'll, it'll be a staff takeaway, uh, but I can tell you six line will be a transit route in the future. Okay, uh, so they will be in walkable distance to that type of uh, usage. Uh, details haven't been finalized yet with regards to the reconstruction of six line, uh, but that is part of the coordination with this, not only in the built form, it's in the road patterns, it's in the connectivity, both from a pedestrian, the cycling, from the, the car perspective. So all that comes into play on how you deal with block 27. So, and then, sorry, just along those lines, you just mentioned cycling. Uh, do we have an indication whether Six Line is going to also have a bike lane? Uh, I have no knowledge of that right now, but I will include it as part of the staff report for the future. Excellent. Thank you so much. That's all I have. All right. Thank you, Councillor Sanju. Any, uh, any additional questions? Councillor Grant. Thank you. Um, in, in addition, just to include my name to so people concerned about parking, um, and then further to what's going on with Block 27, I, I, I've been concerned about the fact that we've been eroding the meaning of what a neighborhood center is supposed to be for a while now. And, and we've eroded it now to a point where, okay, now there's going to be these three apartment blocks that they want to build larger. But uh, do we have any idea as to whether this neighborhood center is going to have, much as Councillor Adams brought up, you know, cycle or whatever else, but any amenities for the neighborhood to come sit down, relax? I mean, some some area where uh, people can at least gather, because that, to my mind, is a neighborhood center, not three small condo buildings. And uh, if we could just put that on the list of things that uh, we're concerned about, that would be lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Grant, for naming my pet peeve, now that we've, we're doing all of our pet peeves here. Um, Councillor has the deal. Um, just further to that, um, can we just, is there a ratio of what the neighborhood center um, density would be to the green space that it must surround? Because when you look at it, it's saying 0.18. Was it previously supposed to be less than that? Or is, is have they maintained um, a 0.18 but still asked for the density? I'm not, I wasn't clear on that. I'm sorry, uh, Councillor. Can you repeat that? There's, there on the chart, it shows that uh, the resident reserve, I'm, I'm assuming that's the section um, that Councillor Grant was talking about, which would be where people could sit. It was listed at 0.18. Um, and I'm just wondering, is that um, when they, they've requested this additional density, did they maintain the 0.18 or is the 0.18 increased 
recognizing you've got higher density, so you should be giving more uh, green space. Um, through you, Your Worship, to Councillor Hansel-Field, the reserve that we're talking about at 0.18 is actually the south side of Street A. It's the lots that I were uh, talking about that would be amalgamated with the Argo property to the south to create viable building lots. It, okay, so my misunderstanding, thank you for clarifying that. So is there a ratio of how much green space has to be provided if they ask if if they got this additional uh, density that would whatever green space would be required on the development of the site and for discussion purposes if it were this site with the three uh, store or the three six story apartment buildings we through the zoning bylaw right. would dictate how much landscaping there would be to try and green okay. things up as you're aware, from Council's site plan perspective, there are tree canopy cover targets of 20%, as an, as an example. All that gets into the mix on how the underground parking, the surface parking, the landscaped areas, the built form, and all that come into play. So that is a huge discussion with regards to the development of Block 27. And if necessary, we can put it into the zoning bylaw to dictate what it would look like at the site plan stage. That sounds like a good idea. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Noel. Uh, quick question. Um, in terms of the parking, uh, where are we in terms of schedule with respect to the parking study that we've been anticipating for, uh, particularly for North Oakville? And will it be done in time um, to adjudicate the recommendation based on the findings of that study? Through you, Your Worship, to Councillor Noel, it's my understanding that the uh, COVID has impacted the the study itself and it's to be restarted in the fall so this this project along with the other projects around it are going to take some time to finalize so the input of that will be invaluable to the final product that gets before council so you're saying that the the recommendation report on this will come subsequent to the north oakville parking study or i don't know what the time is you're uh, Councillor, uh, but we'll do our best to get whatever information it is if it precedes and if it, it is after then that information will be taken into consideration as part of the recommendation report. Yeah, just just a comment. I mean, it's um, um, we keep approving these 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 proposals in North Oakville with the hope of uh, this study coming forward. I know COVID is obviously a, a big issue uh, across the board in terms of getting these things done. but. Um, I am concerned that we're getting further and further in the hole on parking, and we really need to have the advice of that parking study, I think, going forward uh, as we continue to uh, uh, review these applications and approve them. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Uh, Director Simeone. Uh, through you, Your Worship, just getting back to the councillor with respect to the study, my understanding it was one of the projects that was halted or, or slowed down in response to the COVID crisis. And so that budget has been put on hold. I understand it's coming back to council as part of the budget process this fall. And if it's approved, it'll go forward in January. Thank you for that information. Let's see, I'm looking at the gallery view for hands. Perhaps I could see a hand to, um, to move the staff recommendation. That would be Councillor Robertson, thank you. Director Simeone, uh, do you want to tell us what additional items you're adding to this report? Thank you, Your Worship, and to members of Council. Uh, number one, or A, how will visitor parking for the townhouses be handled with respect to the number of spaces, their location, the location and the adequacy of these spaces? Uh, B, consider the other examples of where density increases have been approved in North Oakville and on what basis? C, further explanation of the finance section regarding growth pays for growth? D. Has there been any discussion regarding affordable housing from a regional perspective? Uh, C, concerns regarding the reduction in the number of bedrooms provide a rationale in the, in the, lap, in the recommendation report. Uh, e, e, F, how will pedestrian and cycling access be provided through Block 27 if the cul-de-sac remains as proposed? Uh, G, consider any reductions in parking spaces sizes with respect to the townhouses. Uh, H, what will the frontage be on specific lots within the development? I, what can be done to ensure transit is viable within this development? Uh, J, will Sixth Line have a bike lane in its ultimate design? 
K, what neighborhood amenities will be part of the development of Block 27? And L, has the development maintained the appropriate green space ratio given the change or the requested change in the increased density on Block 27? Um, Mr. Director, there's a question from Councillor Sanju, and then I have one for you. Councillor Sanju? Uh, thank you, Your Worship. I just have an edit, actually. Uh, Dr. Simeone, um, you mentioned the parking spaces for townhouses. I'd also recommend adding in garage requirements. Uh, Director Simeone, um, did you also capture the concern of Councillor Grant and myself about um, are we being true to the design of the neighborhood centers as a you know, gathering place for the neighborhood, uh, a la the, you know, the famous, uh, I don't know whether to cite uh, Duaney's <laughs> design or the actual North Oakville East Secondary Plan, which, which also you know, plots them out there and makes them look coherent. So thank you, Your Worship, for your question. I believe I wrote it as follows. I can edit it. What neighborhood amenities will be part of the development of Block 27? But perhaps I need to enhance that to reflect the, uh, your, your specific intent. Yeah, it was, it was uh, I, I'm pretty sure that I speak for <coughs> Councillor Grant and myself and maybe others when I say there was a vision of a neighborhood around a village square, if you will, and uh, that's the piece that I really feel the public really bought into for this plan. And, uh, and as Councillor Grant rightly pointed out, it sometimes appears to be lost in the shuffle. Through you, Richard, perhaps I can say, how will the vision of the neighborhood squ uh, square be enhanced through this proposal or implemented through this proposal? Yeah, implemented. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Councillor Elgar. Yeah, thank you. I, I didn't hear anything about the allocation, which uh, not all the developers have bought into at the region yet. So everything is kind of predicated, as I understand it, on the fact that we need the developers to pump in the money before anything can happen with any of these applications right now. And I agree. The other thing is with what uh, Mayor Burton said about Dubani, with everybody's going to have a coffee waiting at the bus stop at this community area, like doesn't seem to be happening in the North Oak Bill at this point. So I'd love to see something where that would happen going forward so you're not standing on a postage stamp. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. All right, I will look for a mover for the recommendation. Uh, if I didn't already get one. Councillor Palmer, thank you. Please, uh, by show of hands, uh, sh anyone objecting to the recommendation? Madam Clerk, there are no objections and the recommendation is carried. Thank you, Council. Let's move to item number five. This is the statutory public meeting. Your Worship. Sorry. Uh, just a point of order. My camera is out. Am I out? Am I blocked on your uh, viewer? You, your, your screen is dark. Um, we can see you and we can see your square. If this was Hollywood Squares, your, your <laughs> square would be empty. Okay, there's, my camera must have uh, kaput on my uh, etch a sketch uh, computer here. <laughs> well, so we'll, long as I can, um, I'll just be speaking then if, if it's uh, at, the, at certain times. Is that okay? That's perfectly fine. Thank you. Uh, so, council and public, the next item is number five on the agenda the statutory public meeting and recommendation report for the draft plan of subdivision at 393 Dundas and 407 Dundas. This is a matter that's been before us, of course, and we get to return to our attention to uh, Robert Thun, our senior planner. Mr. Th Mr. Thun, away you go. Uh, thank you, Mayor Burton, members of council and the public. Um, as you had mentioned, a revised draft plan of subdivision submission has been made for the properties at 393 and 407 Dundas Street West. And as you correctly mentioned, these two properties were before council for official plan amendment and zoning bylaw amendments in the last two years. The report can be found on page 61 of tonight's agenda. Uh, for everyone's information, uh, the slide before council is the location map. 
um, the subject lands being 3.85 hectares in size are located on the north side of Dundas Street West, just west of George Savage Avenue. The surrounding lands are principally residential. Uh, in addition, a stormwater management pond uh, in this location where my cursor is abuts the westerly property and on the east side of the site, uh, which is block six of the draft plan, uh, the Shannon's Creek traverses the site. And there's also a block immediately on the west side, which has frontage on Dundas Street. It is owned by a private developer. Um, it is designated DUC, Dundas Urban Core, so it has the same principle or same permissions as would be for blocks one and five on the subject property. Uh, a zoning bylaw amendment application and the development of the site has not been submitted yet. Um, it could be forthcoming, but at this present time, it has not, uh, not been submitted. The slide before council now shows on the left side the original draft plan of subdivision that was submitted uh, in 2018. It only related to the 407 lands. So um, there was no applicable servicing allocation at the time, so the subdivision couldn't be fully processed. Since that time, the landowner for the lands in the left portion of the site, so 407, acquired the 393 lands, which is the old Dynasty restaurant lands. Uh, the official plan amendment for the 407 lands, so the property on the west side here, was dealt with by council on August 7th of 2018. And the bylaw, uh, zoning bylaw amendment for 393 was approved by council on June 10th in 2019. So considering all this, the applicant revised the original subdivision, the left side, to the right side. Uh, it contains eight blocks and their boundary limits to those eight blocks, together with the extension of Trailside Drive south to Dundas Street. So Trailside Drive at the top here, just dead ends. Once the subdivision gets built, it will connect up to Dundas Street. As you can see here, the top part of the right-of-way is 17 meters wide, so that includes the road, the asphalt, and the boulevards and the sidewalks. It is widened out towards the bottom end to allow for on-street parking, which was an issue that was raised by council through the OPA and zoning processes. So blocks one, and two relate to apartments and stacked townhouses. Blocks two, three, and four relate to street townhouses. They will directly front onto Trailside Drive. Block six is the natural heritage system, as I mentioned, that will relate to Shannon's Creek and the extension towards Dundas Street. It's not everything because there is a property to the uh, east of the site where lands would have to be acquired to make it a fulsome uh, creek block. Block seven is a three meter wide walkway that would connect Trailside Drive to the natural heritage system in block six. And block eight is a servicing block which would include both major and minor drainage, so the pipes and the overland flow system to the stormwater management pond that presently exists to the west. In the design of the uh, sites, uh, the apartment buildings were to be placed on the corners and allowed for ground floor commercial. There were no noise attenuation features or walls that would be required because it's the built form that creates the noise attenuation. And the balconies do not meet the size for required noise attenuation. Um, as I said, and these buildings would front directly onto Dundas Street. From the secondary plan perspective, as you can see, your worship and members of council, uh, there's three designations. There is a Dundas urban core, there's a neighborhood area, and there's also the natural heritage system area. Um, the North Oakville master plan, which is on the right-hand side of your screen, is just, as I mentioned in the previous uh, submission, uh, is one way of dealing with North Oakville. But the principle basically here was Dundas urban core, a connection of Trailside Drive from north to south, and your general urban to the north. Uh, so that's reflected in the master plan because they have overlays of Dundas Street Urban Core, General Urban, which is in this upper area here, and then you have the Dundas Urban Core in that area. 
and then a portion of this uh, site, as you can see, the green was one way of dealing with the second with the Shannon's Creek back in 2008. It has been modified to what you see before council presently. From a zoning perspective, the zoning was dealt with, as I had mentioned, both in 2018 and 2019. Uh, the 407 lands are zoned H21 DUC, which is Dundas Urban Core, SP Special Provision 61, and also Holding Provision 24 with General Urban. For 393, Council dealt with it on June 10th, 2019, and zoned the site H36, which is a holding provision. Dundas Urban Core as the main zoning category and also special provision 73. A site plan application has been submitted for both blocks one and five of the subdivision and they are currently under review. The holding provisions for the site will have to be released before any development can occur. So we will be before council again to lift those holding provisions once their required um, provisions have been dealt with. And they basically deal with servicing allocation, section 37 agreements, and some environmental work that's required. The slide before council right now, because um, just to clarify some comments that were in the staff report, the table to the left basically has the draft plan unit counts and the site plan unit counts. And to the left or right hand side of the screen, you have the two site plans. I've tried marrying them as close together as possible so you can get a better uh, composite picture. But you will see basically uh, the numbers from the draft plan, which were taken from the table. And the draft plan of subdivision was submitted last fall. The site plan applications have been further refined and they do have an increase in the number of units. As you can see for the apartment for block one, which is 407, that is on your left-hand side here, uh, it's increased by 21. For block five, which is on your right-hand side, it has gone up by 28. So there's been a 49 unit increase uh, in the apartments. The stacked townhouses and the street towns have not changed. So it's, once again, it's the issue of creating smaller units from two bedroom to one bedroom. So the total number of units that we're dealing with right now are 653 based on the site plans that have been submitted to date. From a parking perspective, we were looking at the site plans and the numbers associated with those 653 units. Um, as mentioned, on-street parking was a matter before council during the OPA and zoning stage. Uh, if uh, I can scroll back, but there are 29 spaces on Trailside Drive. So 29 spaces are being dealt with for on-street parking. Similar to the previous uh, presentation, uh, the North Oakville zoning bylaw, because these are buildings are 10 stories in height, uh, they require up to not as that would be their max. There's no minimum, but up to 1.2 parking spaces per dwelling unit, plus 0.2 parking spaces per dwelling unit for visitors. There would also be an allotment for uh, commercial space at one for 30 square meters of leasable floor area. The townhouse dwelling units only require the one space. There is no requirement for visitors parking. So block one at present is 351 parking spaces. Uh, consideration is given, and I was just advised this this afternoon, your worship, to the councillors, that they are considering increasing the number of parking spaces on block number one. With regards to block number five, 420 parking spaces are being proposed, as you can see through the, uh, through the slide. Uh, the on-street parking or the street townhouses, blocks two, three, and four, as mentioned previously, uh, you only need one. However, they're doing one in the garage and one in the driveway, and two dwelling or two uh, spaces are per unit. Based on the site plan comments that I have looked at, I'm not processing the site plans, but uh, other staff are, there's been no concern raised with regards to the parking number that are being proposed. So the perspective from that is they comply with the zoning requirements. 
Uh, so once again, your worship, the, the, the matter before council is the draft plan, and it's to establish the block limits. The development is subject also to future processes. Uh, we've started blocks one and five already through the site plan process. Blocks two, three, and four, once the plans get registered, they will be coming back to council as part of the part lot control process. But those are the 15 units that are being proposed uh, at present. So in conclusion, Your Worship, staff are putting forward the recommendation as shown before council uh, for your consideration. Mr. Thun, <clears throat> thank you very much for that. Um, council, uh, Councillor Elgar has a question. Councillor Elgar. Uh, thank you. Uh, Rob, my concern is, again, about allocation. Is this, the, is this allocation from an old allocation, or is this one that has not yet got the funding from all the developers in all the region? Through you, Your Worship, to Councillor Algar, this is part of the new allocation program. However, we did receive condition from the region with regards to allowing this to proceed to Council for draft approval. It is conditional. So we do have approval. So at this point, we have approval. In the, from this perspective, there is a condition related to uh, acquiring servicing allocation. They have signed their agreements and they've paid their monies. They're just waiting for the region to do a final sign off. And as my understanding, hey, that program hopefully will conclude by the end of the month. Okay, yes, because as up until if they don't, like from my understanding, if the at the regional level, if all the developers don't set, put their money forward by June 30th, the whole allocation program could be in jeopardy. Is that your understanding? We have to go back again and take a look at everything. I will defer to other staff on, on that because, as I said, I wasn't part of the servicing allocation program, but I do have a condition that allows us to proceed to granting draft approval. Uh, and we'll find out more by June 30th. Is that the plan? Councillor Elgar, uh, Director Simeone uh, has some information. You, you will yourself note uh, the previous discussion about holds on property waiting for servicing, which is the way this traditionally gets dealt with. Uh, Director right. Simeone. Uh, through your worship, it's my understanding that there was some uh, slow uptake in the uh, area of North Halton and Halton Hills specifically. I believe that matter has been resolved, and it's my understanding the matter will be resolved by the end of the month in time for the deadline of June 30th. Elgar, okay, I, I thank you because that uh, that that gets interesting. If if we don't get 100, percent I was what I was told is that we'll have to take a look at everything going forward. So things could change. Um, I'm I'm also concerned about parking, as we all should be, because I don't think we're really dealing with this at a good at, at this point. And I think we asked for a report back from the staff regarding parking issues in that in north of Dundas. So it, when will the report be coming back? Director Simeone um, previously answered this question, but he's happy to do it again. Sir? Through, through your worship. So the parking study was underway. And when the COVID crisis hit, uh, certain projects were put on hold as they were capital works projects and it provided the town an opportunity to, to stop spending money, to look at where their priorities were this matter will come back to you in the form of a budget uh, discussion back in the fall. And if it's funded, it's my understanding the project will proceed in the 2021 budget year. So, so, so what I'm hearing, this could go ahead before we get the report back then. Is that what I'm hearing? Uh, through your worship, yes, correct. Well, it's going ahead conditionally at this point. Conditionally, okay. Okay, well, we'll wait to hear more. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Elgar. Uh, Councillor Hazlitt Neal. So, can you help me understand again on site plan how you're going to resolve this one and two bedroom issue? Um, I'm, I'm, you know, when we, we use this phrase about livability, um, we are going to have an increasing number of people who are going to try and cram um, themselves into a one bedroom. They're growing families, um, and the uh, the supply of two bedrooms doesn't seem to be um, being mandated or considered very strongly. So, how 
do you go about um, trying to find a better balance? Because it does affect the livability of a community um, and, and, and the family's mental health. Um, director, perhaps you could help counsel with the region's requirements around affordable housing, the quotas for one bedroom, two bedroom, three bedroom, and the price points that are set by the market on each of those categories. That's right, Your Worship. The, the region is. And the, then Mr. Thun could talk about mm -hmm. how, how what the mix is here on ones and twos. So the region is the authority with respect to affordable housing. We look to their guidance with respect to that. It's typically looked at a certain uh, income range. I think it's 30% mm -hmm. of, of an income threshold within the community, whatever that is in, in, in the Oakville context. It's their comments to provide the basis. I would refer to Mr. Thun to give you the specifics on the numbers, but it's, it's their comments that drive that. So that with respect to affordability and the number of units, that's something that we take, take into account through our, our partners at the region through their, their comments. Yeah, I'll just supplement that with, I'll forward to you uh, if you like, a copy of the region's housing report, which every year details how many units were achieved in each of these categories in each of the municipalities in the region. And you, you may find that helpful. Okay, thank you for that. I'm, just, I, I'm still, uh, I guess, awaiting a, a description of how, as it says on page 64, that the mix of the units will be resolved through basically uh, ongoing site plan review. So, uh, I mean, I guess I'm asking, how are, how are you doing that? Are you, are, you, are you using this region ratio or are you using, um, you know, what's your approach to try and get a better balance here? Through you, Your Worship, the site plan applications before staff right now have a breakdown of one bedroom, one bedroom plus den, two bedrooms, two bedroom plus den, and so on and so forth. Um, unfortunately, I can't give you the number right now because the script is very small on the legend that I do have. And, um, and that may be, uh, I know we have the applicant online and maybe that can be an a, a question uh, confirmed or submitted to the applicant. Director Thank Simeone. You. I can just provide a, a few other observations. So we've, Council's already addressed the principle of use through the official plan amendment, yep. the specifics of the use, which is through the zoning uh, bylaw. You, as you would understand, through the development process, the developer uh, invests in the next level of detailed design drawings once they get a certain level of approval. Site plan is really down to the level of construction drawings. They're actually locating things in a very specific manner. They have a high degree of certainty mm -hmm. where things are going. And often they, they find they can move things around and as they do that, it yields a, an ability perhaps to, to generate more units. It's the same development. It's the site plan uh, process provides the absolute certainty of where things are, right down to the actual measurements on the ground. When you're dealing with that on an official plan level, you're dealing with a concept, concept that sort of moves into zoning. And once you've satisfied the zoning bylaw, they're free to move things around. And if they can satisfy our, our drainage requirements, our, our lighting requirements, our waste storage requirements, our pedestrian access to the face of the building requirements, they can often uh, find additional ways to add more units. So it's often at this stage you'll see slight modifications based on more certainty in terms of what the actual built product will look like. Mr. Thun, any just, more? Just to supplement uh, Mr. Simeone, the zoning bylaw created the parameters of what the development is to look like, from the heights to the setbacks to the coverages to the parkings. They all comply with that. So the built form isn't really different from what council has seen before. There have been some things that are tweaked, but for the most part, it is those uh, concepts that you've seen already and they're abiding by. And that's what the site plan application is. So the built form is still the built form that was always envisioned. The uh, councilor, uh, perhaps this will help you. The housing report every year uh, that I've looked at in the last few years shows that something like half of all the new affordable housing in Halton is built in Oakville, and it shows achievement across all the ca uh, categories of unit sizes, and that's achieved at the, let's call it the town level, rather than at the site level. I hope that helps you, and I'll forward you a copy of the report.
Next, Councillor Palmer. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, so just um, reflecting on what Mr. Simeone just stated about they're free to increase the number of units. My concern again is the parking. I mean, um, if we're increasing the units, that means there's more people and those people are going to have visitors. So uh, I am a little bit confused because the two projects have come together now. Um, and the last time we looked at it, it was separate. The parking also was not included in the report that was brought forward to us. Um, we just saw it for the first time since the increase now during the presentation. So I just want some confirmation that the parking matter right now is conditional. And I'm not sure if we can place an H a provision on something like that to make sure that we can thoroughly look at that increase in units and see if we have adequate parking. And also if by chance the report comes back from staff um, before um, this matter is finalized, we have the opportunity to amend the parking in this application to meet uh, any new requirements that we may put forward. Um, so that's where I am with the whole parking. And I, I just want to get clarification. Is that conditional right now? Through you, Your Worship, what is being proposed right now is a conditional draft plan approval to the subdivision. And the subdivision basically creates the blocks. As, Councilor, or as uh, Mr. Simeone had alluded to, the OP and the zoning have already established the land use principles and the zoning requirements for what the development is going to occur. The next stage of it is the subdivision, which actually creates the blocks. And then after that is the site plan where you get into the nuances of the parking. So if there's more units, they still are complying, they still have to comply with the parking regulations. So if there are more units, that means there's more residential units. There is a factor included for more visitors parking. The concern that was raised through the OPN zoning stages was on street parking. So there are 29 spaces on the park on Trailside Drive to address that also. So the developments are taking care of themselves. So the two apartment buildings are taking care of themselves, both from a residential, a visitor, and a commercial perspective. So there's no, there's no request here for any holding with regards to parking. We're asking okay. for the lines to be draft approved. I think just the, what I'm hearing from my council colleagues is that even though we understand from you that they're required to meet the standards of the parking, I don't think any of us are really satisfied with what those standards currently are. Um, and until that report comes back, it's very difficult to make these decisions on, you know, and I know parking is going to come at a later phase, but I, th I guess that's what we're trying to relay back. Well, at least that's what I, I want to relay back to staff um, with, with parking. Um, my next question is, could we just talk a little bit about um, section 37 and the um, bonusing the proposed height of um, 10 stories? I mean, do we have any updates on the CBC or anything um, of, of related to whether this application will undergo bonusing or if CBC will be in place by the time we review it? Through your worship, the, the bonusing is already captured in the zoning bylaws, so it is already there. Okay. So this the bonusing will be considered for this application, and they not are, CBC. And as part of the site plan process, those are things that have to be addressed. A section thirty-seven agreement. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Sanjiu. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, thank you again, uh, Mr. Thon. So I have a, a number of questions, and I think that the majority of them have uh, kind of been touched on a little bit. Um, but I wanted to just delve back into the parking issue for just one moment. Um, I recall this particular app applicant coming to Town Hall previously with Mr. Korsiak and indicating that they were going to be including hanging or lift-based parking spots in these apartment complexes. Um, I don't know where that indication has now gone. It was it was provided to us previously. I don't see it in any of this information. If we could touch back 
about that. I don't know if they're still planning on doing that, but I, I at least for my initial understanding, that was something that they were going to be moving forward with, and that's what gave me the comfort from a parking perspective mm -hmm. to be able to continue with this project. Um, and then I have a general question. Uh, I certainly have the feeling, and, I, and I'm getting the understanding that Councilor Palmer and some of my council colleagues are also feeling the same. We're kind of being asked to do something without all of the information um, and, and asking to kind of maybe cover up one eye before to make up this decision. Is there an ability for us to delay the approval until after that parking report comes back? Through you, Mayor Burton, to Councillor Sandu, the timeframes are related to appeals, depending on when this comes back, would be in the hands of the developer. The application was submitted in August of last year. It was supposed to come to Council before the COVID process or COVID pandemic. However, with that happening now, timeframes are going to be dealt with, I believe, soon. Uh, so, depending on how long this takes, they will be in a position to appeal. Would we not have the ability, and this may be a question for legal, would we not have the ability to increase the length of time that's available for any developer or appeals process, just like how there would be from a criminal perspective in the courts? I don't see why that delay wouldn't also apply here given COVID. Uh, I'm not, through you, your worship, uh, to Councillor Sandu, I'm not aware of extending time frames. The time frames are established through the Planning Act and through uh, acts of the province. So we're, we have to deal with those. Can we get some clarity on that? I think that that would be helpful for every application going forward about whether we're able to extend those timelines or not. The, the, commission, the, the CAO and the director are happy to give you the clarity you're seeking. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, through you, Mayor Burton, to Council. Uh, the, um, the requirements for the timing of applications is set by the Planning Act. We're not able to change that at all. They did supersede them or set them aside during the time of COVID, but as of, uh, we did get notice from the minister that they are going to be approving legislation that as of June 22nd, the Planning Act timeframes will begin to apply again. Um, so, so we have a short delay, if I'm understanding you. See you. Okay. Yeah, we had a short delay during the COVID time, so they haven't been applied since I think it was uh, near around the end of March. And they will again kick in as time periods then on uh, June 22nd. So would this, would this be delayed until June 22nd for us to have to make a decision or no? Uh, no, I, I think yeah, there's some clarity in terms of what is in front of you tonight is a draft plan of subdivision. That does not involve zone, that does not involve the zoning questions at all. So the questions about parking, uh, the questions about um, uh, the, those types of details are, are, are not what the application is about. The application is about simply establishing a road and blocks on a plan. Um, that is what the application is in front of you. The zoning in terms of the parking ratios, so if they increase units, for example, there's a ratio that says they then need to increase parking. So those parking ratios were all approved when you dealt with the zoning application and they now all apply to the site. So the only thing they're trying to do now is extend the road, which is I think an important piece of being able to move forward with North Oakville because the connection of roads for pedestrians, bikes, was all very much part of the North Oakville secondary plan. And that is, in essence, what is in front of you tonight. None of the zoning in question, or none of the zoning and parking issues are, because you dealt with that through the zoning. So, see, of course, I just want to, just for my clarity, the reason why we're not seeing the initial conversation pieces about the lifted parkings and things like that that we saw previously is because that's not on the table right now. That's We've right. We've already approved that. That's correct. The only thing you have now is the draft plan to create the road and the blocks. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Sanju, for uh, very useful questions. Um, if that's exhausted your questions, I'm going to turn to the public, and uh, and you're going to get a, a bonus five-minute uh, break in the middle of this. If there's anyone watching the live stream of this meeting on Oakville.ca who wishes to speak to this item, please call 905-815-7000.
6095, and we will connect you to the meeting. Council, we will now pause for five minutes to allow to see if any members of the, of the public uh, wish to call in. And so there's your first bio break of the, of the evening. So uh, we'll be back at 7.50. Thank you. All right, Council is uh, Planning and Development Council is resuming. Uh, no members of the public phoned in on the matter. Uh, council, the, the um, representative of the applicant is available. Uh, I wonder if you need to speak to him now that you understand that this is only a draft plan of subdivision dealing only with establishing roads and block lines. Please raise your hand if you have questions for the applicant. All right, I, Madam Clerk, I see none. Uh, are we ready to uh, move the recommendation? If so, I need a hand. Don't be shy now. Councillor Palmer, thank you. Please raise your hand if there's any objection to the motion. Madam Clerk, I don't see an objection, but I don't see every member of council either. I do see almost everybody. So if you have an objection and I can't see you, please say so. Madam Clerk, there being no objections, I, I uh, declare the measure carried. Uh, and Council, that brings us to item number six. Now, if you'll turn with me to item number six. This is the public meeting report for a zoning bylaw amendment for St. Paul's United Church at 454 Rebecca Street. Councillor Duddock has declared a pecuniary interest in that she is a member of that church. And so she will be uh, not participating in this part of the meeting. That may even be why I don't see her picture on the screen anymore. Uh, we have, uh, Council, we have a presentation from the planner on this file. And the planner on this file is Kelly Livingstone. And I would like to welcome Kelly. Uh, Mr. Livingstone, uh, welcome to your first P&D meeting. And uh, uh, Council, you, you, have, uh, you have the author of a very fine report. I was quite impressed with how well it was done and the issues that it captured. And uh, Mr. Livingstone, we are ready for your presentation. I trust everyone can hear me and see me? Yes, sir. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you for the kind words, Mayor Burton. Uh, and thank you, members of council, uh, for joining me tonight. Uh, this is the statutory public meeting related to a zoning bylaw amendment application for St. Paul's United Church, uh, located at 454 Rebecca Street. Uh, and the application intends to rezone a portion of the lands. Uh, the purpose of tonight's meeting, of course, is to obtain input from the public as well as counsel related to this application. Uh, no recommendation is being proposed tonight. Uh, the church property, as identified on the slide as St. Paul's Church Lands, uh, is located just southeast of the Rebecca Street and Sabella Drive intersection uh, and is approximately 1.01 hectares in size with 74.5 meters in frontage to Rebecca Street. Uh, as shown on the slide, uh, and as I already mentioned, just a Sorry, previous slide. I'll let you know when I want to switch slides. Um, as shown in the slide, just a portion of the church lands are being proposed to be rezoned. Uh, these lands will be referred to as the subject lands and are located on the southwest corner of the property. Uh, they are about 0 0.9 hectares in size with 23 meters of frontage to Sabella Drive. Uh, surrounding land uses are as follows. Uh, to the north and northeast, there is residential and a school. Uh, to the east is uh, YMCA Community Center, and to the south and west, uh, you have predominantly low density residential lands. Next slide, please. Uh, as seen on the aerial photo, uh, the 3D image you have there, uh, the lands to be rezoned already have a residential structure on them. Uh, the building, as the applicant explains in their um, submission materials, uh, was originally constructed on the church property as a manse to house members of the clergy. Uh, the applicant has further explained that the manse is no longer being used by the church and the church wants to rezone those lands in order to facilitate a future severance of that property. 
uh, a separate uh, a severance application is a separate planning process and not part of the current proposed zoning bylaw amendment. Uh, however, rezoning the lands is a required first step prior to any submission or evaluation of a severance application, uh, which would create a new lot for that residential building. Next slide, please. Uh, very quickly, in the livable Oakville official plan, uh, the church property, including the lands to be rezoned, are both designated as low density residential and identified in the urban structure of the livable Oakville plan as being residential. Next slide, please. Uh, looking towards the zoning, uh, the subject lands are identified in gray in the slide in the, in the maps above and are currently zoned as CU uh, for community use and proposed to be rezoned to RL2-0 in keeping with the surrounding zones and surrounding neighborhood. Uh, the RL2-0 zone permits single detached dwellings, as I've explained already exists on the site. In order to ensure that a future severance will be able to be achieved, uh, compliance of the manse lands, as well as the church property, uh, with respect to all applicable zoning regulations for both the CU and RL2-0 zones, will be fur further evaluated and detailed in a future recommendation report. Uh, slide, please. Thanks. Um, as you can see from the long list of matters to be considered, I don't need to read them all, um, but these are the issues and matters that have been identified for uh, to date for further review and consideration. Uh, that, of course, includes uh, consistency with provincial plans and policy, uh, conformity with the regional uh, region of Halton official plan, uh, conformity to livable full plan policies, uh, including uh, residential intensification policies and severance uh, policies that are identified in the staff report and included in Appendix uh, B, I believe, uh, as well as the two last points, uh, the first of which being evaluation of the appropriateness for the proposed rezoning from community use to RL2-0, uh, ensuring that it's uh, consistent with the character of the surrounding area, as well as evaluation of the specific lot dimensions for the area to be rezoned uh, and whether or not they meet the requirements for a future severance. Uh, the town is specifically concerned, as I mentioned in the previous slide, uh, with ensuring that the rezoning does not restrict any possible uh, future development of the adjacent lands. Uh, it does not put any part of the remaining church lands into non-compliance with the requirements of the CU zone and that the size and shape of the manse lands to be severed in the future, uh, conform to the requirements of the RL2-0 zone. Uh, next slide, please. And that does it. Uh, the purpose of tonight's meeting uh, is, of course, to obtain public comment and input from members of council. Uh, the feedback will be, of course, responded to in the staff recommendation report uh, and form part of the public record. Uh, therefore, staff put the following recommendation, as, as shown in the slide, uh, for council's consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Livingstone. Uh, you've survived your baptism. And uh, <laughs> Councillor Chisholm, if you'll just wait one second. If anyone wish, if any member of the public wishes to ask questions or provide a, um, information or opinion on the matter, they should uh, please call 905-815-6095, oh. and we will connect you to the meeting. And council will now spend, I hope, the next five minutes at least with our questions and issues to be added to the report. Uh, and those two things will, I hope, dovetail efficiently. Councillor Chisholm, uh, you're first. Your Worship, at the appropriate time, I move the recommendations in this report. Um, uh, I guess we have to wait for public input in five minutes. So, but I, as the time approaches, I'd be happy to move it. Thank you, Councillor Chisholm. Uh, Council, do any of you have any questions? Councillor Robertson. I just have a question in terms of taxes with this property. Once we rezone that piece of property, does the taxation change in terms of property tax for the church? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, I would look to the finance. Or will it, or will it be when 
or will it be when the severance takes place? I'm not sure. And I just think for the church's perspective, it should be up front about that. Mr. Livingstone, I didn't hear your answer. Uh, I would, uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, um, I would imagine that would happen after the severance takes place and the, the lot is created. Uh, but as far as taxation, I would, I would defer uh, any answer to the finance department on that. Uh, and that could certainly be something we look into for a future recommendation report. Uh, Councillor, I believe you can be confident that the church is aware of the tax implications. Councillor O'Meara? Thank you, Your Worship. I, I just have two questions. So on, on the lot, um, first of all, on the lot that's proposing to be severed, are there any community use functions that occur today as it is? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, as I understand it, and as the applicant has explained in their uh, materials, um, I believe they use that structure uh, and they historically used it as a manse, so supplementary to the church property. Uh, but they currently use it as a, a rental building uh, for residential uses. And so uh, they explain that the church doesn't want to um, any longer manage the, the rental of that structure and instead want to rezone and, and create the lot. For and then if you, so if you can help me understand then the entire property needs to be rezoned in order to rezone that lower severance, Is, am, I, am I right in understanding that? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, it's just the, the specific corner of the property that would be uh, rezoned. So, so the lands that uh, currently contain the residential structure, uh, the remainder of the church property would remain as CU zone. And the entrance and exit would be off of um, Sabella then, is that correct? I think Mr. Mayor, that's correct, yes. Uh, the church entrance would remain on uh, Rebecca Street, but they do have a, a blocked off entrance to Sabella as well. Uh, but there is there is a driveway to the single detached structure that exists okay. today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you, Councillor O'Meara. Any other questions? Uh, I haven't heard a concern yet to be added to the uh, report. Does anyone have an addition? Uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, has any member of the public um, uh, called in? All right, thank you. It's been about five minutes. Mm -hmm. Council, the planner for the application, the planner for the church is um, on the line. If you uh, have questions for him, do any of you have questions for Mr. Ramsey? Well, then we thank Mr. Ramsey for being available. Uh, Councillor Chisholm has moved uh, the recommendation, which is that the public meeting report prepared by the planning services department be received and that the comments from the public with respect to the proposed zoning bylaw amendment submitted by St. Paul's United Church be received. If, um, if you object to the adoption of the recommendation, please raise your hand. Madam Clerk, there's no objection. I declare the matter carried. And Councillor Duddick did not participate because she had a Pecuniary interest, which she declared, and I reminded everyone at the top of the meeting. So there, we've really dotted our T's and crossed our I's, or something like that. I know I'll get in trouble for that. And I was just trying to, you know, give a little bit of levity here. Um, Council, that completes the uh, agenda, and it would be terrific to have a motion to rise and report. Councilor Lischina, thank you. Um, please raise your hand if you object to the motion to rise and report. Madam Clerk, there is no objection. Uh, and I declare that motion carried. I rise and report that the Committee of the Whole has met and has made recommendations on consent items one, two, and three, and public hearing items four, five, and six, as noted by the clerk. I, I would ask now for a mover and seconder for the report of the Committee of the Whole. Councillor Knoll and Councillor Giddings, thank you. Please uh, raise your hand if you object to the report being adopted. Madam Clerk, no one objects to the report being adopted. I, care, I declare the, uh, the report adopted. 
I'm not aware of any new business of an emergency congratulatory or condolence nature, but we are now open for those if anyone has one. Anybody you'd like to congratulate? Councillor Duddock. Thank you, Your Worship. I just wanted to extend uh, early birthday wishes to uh, Councillor Elger's wife, Linda, who's celebrating a birthday tomorrow. Aw, we should sing. Happy birthday, Linda. Councillor Lischina. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, since it's uh, Father's Day weekend, I'd like to wish uh, all the dads out there a happy Father's Day. All of us dads, thank you. Councillor Noel. Thank you. I just want to take a moment to uh, congratulate the people of North Oakville for their overwhelming support of our 12th annual uh, Oakville food drive. Uh, we don't have a final tally yet because it's uh, a physically separated uh, food drive this year where normally we collect them all in one location, all the food bags in one location. Uh, we spread out to uh, 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 churches and synagogues and such across the town. Um, but we've, uh, I know that one location where I was working on Sunday, we had over 600 bags of food. Um, and it took, a, it took a long time for only a handful of us to sort them. Big thank you to uh, Councillor Sandu, who uh, joined the team this year. And I believe uh, she personally collected, along with her minions, uh, I think 70 or so bags. So thank you very much to uh, Councillor Sandu and everybody who participated this year. Uh, stellar effort uh, to go a long way to uh, help people cope with this uh, this horrible situation we find ourselves in. Congratulations to everybody for the success, and I do hope that neither one of you nor any of the other volunteers threw out your back uh, wrestling all those bags around. Because I know, Councillor Noel, you do have a back subject to twinges every now and then, so heroic. Uh, all right, everybody. Uh, if I could have a mover and seconder for consideration and reading of the bylaws, Councillor Chisholm and Councillor Longo, thank you. This is for the bylaws as listed in the agenda. And uh, please raise your hand to show objection to the bylaws being adopted. Uh, Madam Clerk, there is no objection, and I declare the bylaws adopted. Council, thank you very much for your time and attention and your very good questions and your contributions to the decisions tonight, each and every one of you. It's been terrific working with you, and uh, we are adjourned.